Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we will be discussing on thiopental. The chemistry of thiopental. Thiopental is a sulfur analog of the barbiturate pentobarbitone. It is first synthesized in 1932 and first used in 1934 by Lundy and Waters. The chemical name is sodium 5 ethyl 5 one methyl butyl 2 thiobarbiturate it is a yellowish powder with a bitter taste and a faint smell of garlic. The nitrogen in the ampule prevents reaction with atmospheric carbon dioxide. 6% anhydrous sodium carbonate is added to increase its solubility in water. It is available in single-dose ampules of 500mg to be dissolved in distilled water to produce 2.5%. This solution is slightly hypotonic. Freshly prepared solution is stable for 24 to 36 hours after mixing. The manufacturer recommends discarding it after 7 hours. It has a pH of 10.8. The oil water partition coefficient of Thiopenta is 4.7 and the pKa is 7.6. It has no derivatives or modified analogs. Mechanism of action of Thiopenta It enhances inhibitory synaptic transmission by activation of the chloride channel on the beta-1 subunit on the GABA-A receptor. Indications of thiopental includes induction of anesthesia in adults and children. It is the default choice for rapid sequence induction and leads to rapid loss of consciousness in one arm brain circulation time. It can also be used for maintenance of anesthesia for short procedures due to risk of accumulation with multiple doses. It is a potent anticonvulsant and is used for treatment of refractory status epilepticus and can be given as an infusion during its management. It can be used to reduce intracranial pressure. Contraindications for thiopental includes airway obstruction, hypersensitivity or allergies to barbiturates, cardiovascular disease as thiopental can cause hypotension and myocardial depression. It should be avoided in patients with hypovolemia, myocardial disease, cardiac valvular stenosis, constrictive pericarditis, and right-to-left intracardiac shunt. In patients with severe hepatic disease, the reduced plasma protein produced by an impaired liver results in higher concentrations of free drug due to reduced protein binding. Metabolism of thiopental may be impaired, but this does not usually affect the recovery from anesthesia. If thiopental were to be administered, it should be given slowly. In patients with renal disease, protein binding decreases as well, and renal elimination of thiopental is usually not affected in CKD. If thiopental were to be administered, it should also be given slowly. In patients with myasthenia gravis and dystrophia myotonica, the respiratory depression is exaggerated if thiopental is given. In patients with reduced metabolic rate such as hypothyroidism, these patients are very sensitive to the effects of thiopental, such as hypotension. In obstetrics, underdosing of thiopental risks awareness in GA and overdosing risks cardiorespiratory depression of the fetus. Give the correct calculated dose. Thiopental is contraindicated in patients with porphyria as it is a barbiturate which can cause lower motor neuron paralysis or severe cardiovascular collapse in patients with porphyria. Thiopental should be avoided in patients with adrenal cortical insufficiency and extremes of age due to risk of hypotension and patients with asthma due to risk of bronchospasm. Thiopental is not a trigger for malignant hyperpyrexia. Dosage of Thiopental Intravenous dose For adults, it is usually 3 to 5 mg per kg, typically 4 mg per kg for adults administered over 15 to 20 seconds. Small volumes of 1 to 2 mL should be given initially and the patient asked if pain is experienced to identify possible unintentional intra-arterial injection before the remainder of the induction dose is given. 2.5% solutions are used instead of 5% to avoid serious complications. Supplementary doses of 50 to 100 mg given if eyelash reflex is not lost after 30 seconds. During sharp procedures when patients are on antonox, supplementary doses of 25 to 100 mg may be given to augment anesthesia. Recovery may be prolonged if a large total dose is used, such as more than 10 mg per kg. 
Use lean body weight in obese patients, which plateaus at 100 kg for males and 70 kg for females. The dose for children is 6 mg per kg and in elderly it should be reduced to 2.5 to 3 mg per kg. The dose for IV infusion is 2 to 3 mg per kg per hour for the treatment of status epilepticus. Heropental has also been used per rectally using a 5 to 10% solution at 50 mg per kg. No other drug should be mixed with thiopental due to risk of crystallization and thrombosis. The IV cannula should be flushed with saline before giving any other drug such as neuromuscular blockers and only give neuromuscular blockers when the patient is unconscious to avoid accidental awareness. Pharmacokinetics of thiopental It is 85% protein bound, mostly to albumin. Conditions where more thiopental-free drug is available and doses needs to be adjusted includes if plasma proteins are reduced, more free drug is available. Plasma proteins can be reduced in malnutrition or disease. Protein binding is reduced in alkalemia and more free drug is present during hyperventilation. Protein binding is also decreased when other drugs such as phenylbutazone displaces thiopental from protein binding sites. The volume of distribution is 2.5 liters per kg. The distribution half-life is 1 to 2 minutes and the elimination half-life is 11.5 hours. Thiopental is highly lipid soluble and diffuses readily into the central nervous system. Consciousness returns when the brain concentration reduces to below a threshold, which depends on the patient's physiology, dose of the drug and rate of administration. Thiopental is predominantly unionized, 61%, at body pH. Metabolism of thiopental. It is metabolized by hepatic oxidation which produces an inactive carboxylic acid derivative and pentobarbital which is an active oxybarbiturate which is metabolized slowly. The metabolism follows a zero order process where 10 to 15 percent of the remaining drug is metabolized each hour up to 30% of the original dose remains in the body at 24 hours. This causes the hangover effect and further doses of thiopental within 1-2 to two days results in accumulation. The metabolites of thiopental are excreted renally and less than 1% is excreted unchanged in the urine. Excretion is impaired in the elderly and the obese. Pharmacodynamics of thiopental Central nervous system Thiopental produces rapid loss of consciousness. It is a potent hypnotic and the loss of consciousness typically occurs within 30 seconds after IV injection. Patients with low cardiac output might take a longer time to lose consciousness. Thiopental causes CNS depression which includes spinal cord reflexes. There is decrease in cerebral blood flow, intracranial pressure and cerebral metabolism. Thiopental is a poor analgesic. Recovery of consciousness occurs in 5 to 10 minutes after a single dose due to redistribution. Thiopental has an N analgesic effect at sub-anesthetic blood concentrations and the reduction in pain threshold at the recovery may result in patient restlessness. Thiopental is a potent anticonvulsant. Sympathetic nervous system is depressed more than parasympathetic nervous system and this may result in bradycardia. However, tachycardia is more common after induction as the baroreceptor inhibition is caused by modest hypotension and loss of vagal tone which may predominate normally in young healthy adults. Cardiovascular system There is dose-related myocardial depression and hypotension. Peripheral vasodilation occurs. Tachycardia or bradycardia can occur. Respiratory system there is reduction in sensitivity of the respiratory center to carbon dioxide levels, thus there is reduced ventilatory drive. A short period of apnea is common, and it is more marked when opioids are given concomitantly. Assisted or controlled ventilation may be needed. When spontaneous ventilation resumes, tidal volumes and respiratory rates are usually lower than normal and increases in response to surgical stimulation. Bronchial muscle tone is increased, However, bronchospasm is uncommon. Laryngeal spasm readily occurs and can be precipitated by surgical stimulation, secretions, blood, foreign bodies, etc. at the larynx or pharynx. 
L-pental depresses the parasympathetic laryngeal reflex arc to a lesser extent compared to other areas of the CNS. Propofol depresses laryngeal reflexes better than thiopental and is the preferred agent of choice when using supraglottic airway devices. The function of hepatorenal system is impaired transiently after thiopental administration and hepatic microsomal enzymes are induced by thiopental. There is reduction of intraocular pressure by up to 40%. The pupils dilate initially then constricts. Light reflex remains present until surgical anesthesia has been attained. Corneal, conjunctival, eyelash and eyelid reflexes are abolished by thiopental. There is reduction in muscle tone due to suppression of spinal cord reflexes. There is no significant effect on the neuromuscular junction. Poor muscle relaxation occurs if thiopental is used as the sole anesthetic agent. Regarding uterine tone, there is little effect from thiopental and uterine contractions are not suppressed. Thiopental does not cause emetic effects. Thiopental crosses the placenta. Fetal blood concentrations do not reach the same levels as that occurs in the mother. Adverse effects of thiopental. Hypotension. The risk of hypotension is increased if excessive doses are used. When thiopental is used in hypotensive, hypovolemic, shocked, or previously hypertensive patients, a fast rate of administration, and thiopental administered when the patient is in a sitting position. The risk of respiratory depression increases if excessive doses are used or concomitant opioids are administered. Tissue necrosis. Perivenous injection results in local necrosis and median nerve damage can occur if thiopental extravasates in the anticubital fossa. If perivenous injection occurs, leave the needle or cannula in place and inject hyaluronidase. Intra-arterial injection of thiopental. Common scenarios where intra-arterial injection of thiopental can occur includes inadvertent injection into the brachial artery or injection into aberrant arteries such as in the anticubital fossa, the aberrant ulna artery, or at the wrist, the superficial branch of the radial artery. Tissue damage is more severe when intra-arterial injection occurs with high thiopental concentrations, such as 5%. Symptoms and signs. Immediate symptoms if the patient is conscious includes intense burning pain, skin blanching, and blisters can occur as well. Within 2 hours, there will be edema, hyperesthesia, and motor weakness. Late signs include signs of arterial thrombosis and gangrene. The mechanism is crystals of thiopental forms in the arterioles, arteries vasoconstrict from local release of no adrenaline, and arteritis results in thrombosis, and emboli forms from adenosine triphosphate released from red blood cells and platelet aggregates, and this emboli causes ischemia and gangrene in the distal parts of the limb. Management of intra-arterial injection includes stopping the injection, leaving the needle or cannula in the artery, dilute the irritant by flushing the vessel with isotonic saline or heparin saline, vasodilation by IV pepaverin 40mg and IV lidocaine 1% 5ml which reduces vessel spasm and provides analgesic effects. Analgesia and sympathectomy with stellate ganglion block or brachial plexus block or guanatidine block. IV guanatidine 10 to 20 mg plus heparin 500 units in 25 to 40 ml of saline injected distally to the arterial tonique, which is left inflated for 20 minutes. Guanatidine blocks alpha adrenergic neurons and depletes nor adrenaline stores, and this effect can last for several weeks. Anticoagulation with IV heparin and warfarin. Removal of the intraarterial cannula once immediate reaction subsides. Remove the cannula if the hand is well perfused. Compression of the site of cannula removal to avoid hematoma formation. Other side effects include laryngeal spasm, bronchospasm, allergy, and thrombophlebitis. Allergy. Thiopental is associated with histamine release and type 1 hypersensitivity reactions are more common. 
up to 1 in 15 to 20,000 patients. These are my references. Thank you.